Okay, we are live there. And now I'm going to turn on the broadcast here. And we should start seeing our participant panel go through the numbers. The numbers are climbing very quickly. Welcome, everyone. We are live on Zoom and on Market America's Facebook page. Hello and welcome. My name is Brandy Murphy. I'm the Director of Training and Field Development for Nutrimetrics. And I am joined tonight by this illustrious panel of Nutrimetrics health professionals. I have Dr. Penny Bashan with me, Dr. Rob Zimbrowski with me, and Susan Pasquale with me tonight. So we're going to get started by talking about how each of these practitioners were introduced to Nutrimetrics and Market America, how the programs have impacted their practice, and how they're kind of evolving with the times as we were moving more to a online model of patient support. Um, and so let's go ahead and get started. We're going to talk to Susan Pasquale first. Hi, Sue. Uh, I'm going to just ask Dr. Penny and Dr. Rob if you could mute yourselves for a second while I talk to Dr. Penny. And We'll go ahead and get started. So, Sue, hello. How are you tonight? Good, good evening, Brandy. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for joining me and joining us. Our audience numbers are going through the roof, and Facebook is finding us a great audience. So, we have a lot of people watching mm -hmm. us tonight. Um, you know, one of the things that I wanted to share with people I know everybody knows you through TLS, right? As the director of sales for TLS, that you've been working with us for, I think, six years uh, in the corporate mm -hmm. office. Uh, but many people might not know that you've also been during that time one of the top retailers of TLS and so let's talk a little bit about you know how did you get started with TLS how did you get started with Market America can you tell us a little bit about that sure um, actually a friend of mine introduced me to the concept of weight loss coaching and this was back in 2005 um, I was a nurse and I was going through graduate school and she mentioned this concept to me and I really never thought about what that was. I've always been into health and nutrition and, and you know, kind of foundational support. I wasn't really sure what that was. Uh, when I graduated my master's program, I decided, hmm, let me think a little bit more about this because I didn't want to just do disease prevention. I wanted to kind of do more wellness. And I just felt there was a really big link between keeping yourself and your body of normal weight and the comorbidities that you may or may not have. So that was kind of my little claim to fame within there. And then I found this TLS program or Transitions Lifestyle System is exactly what I kind of believed in. Um, you know, everybody kind of has their own myths or beliefs about things, but I just really kind of honed in on the components that uh, the, the company put together and the science behind them all. And then I kind of was looking into all the products that Nutrimetrics had to offer. And it was kind of like a home run for me. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, being a, a nurse, tell them a little bit about your background as a nurse. You're a cardiac nurse, correct? Yeah. So I've always done critical care cardiac nursing. Um, and then when I went into graduate school, I worked to become a advanced practice nurse in adult health nursing. And what that kind of means is a lot of um, disease states, unfortunately. It's kind of like a weird myth of what we actually call it versus what it actually is. Um, I've, I've worked predominantly in critical care. I'm currently working in surgical care right now. And um, I really do still, to this day, 21 years later, still see a big link between health and weight management and health and disease, right? right. There, there's kind of that disconnect. And I feel like Nutrimetrics is, helps connect those dots. <laughs> Awesome. And so now you, I know that I've seen many times you talk about the number of people you've coached. You've coached well over 5,000 people, which is really impressive. And, you know, for a new unfranchised owner or an unfranchised owner that maybe isn't a health professional and doesn't have their own practice, seeing a number like that of, you know, if you've coached 5,000 people through TLS, how do you manage that? How are you keeping in contact with your customers? How are you keeping them engaged? And what tools do you use to engage them in the TLS system? Yeah, and so I'll start it off with kind of a twofold. So for a non-health professional who may be watching this, there is no rhyme or reason behind why I did it and why I did it so well. I want to share with you guys that when I started heavily coaching, there was no practice behind me. Um, I wish that there were because I would have been able to help so many more people, but I want to share with you, it takes one person. And that's kind of where it started for. And for me, it actually started with a cardiologist I knew, and he just had such, such tremendous success with the program. And that's where people led to people. Um, 
I will tell you that I've kind of transitioned, no pun intended, <laughs> to how I have coached my clients because as the numbers grow and as I needed more force behind me and coaches behind me and coaches working with me and other healthcare providers kind of who, you know, believe in the same um the same concepts I believe in, I had to go from coaching in person to coaching in groups to solely coaching online. Um, you know, I know we're all in a pandemic right now and many of us are at home, we're working from home, we don't have access to go out like we used to. Mm -hmm. So for me, fortunately, I did this years ago. It wasn't a massive transition for me. Um, I'll tell you what though, Brandy, I keep it simple. Um, Zoom has been everybody's friend lately. <laughs> But I'll tell you what, I even keep it simpler than that. I love the Zoom capability because I am able to see people if I need to. But I honestly, I use my cell phone. It's as simple as that. If a client is journaling or they have questions for me, I literally just have them text me. It takes me no time at all. And I'll tell you what, as a healthcare provider, it's great to be able to have you know, some support when you're at home, you don't have to be in the office seeing people to answer questions. And as an unfranchised owner, it's great to be home with your family and not have to be out coaching and answering questions. So this little device has really <laughs> supported thousands of people. <laughs> well, you know, and it does so many great things too, because like you were saying with journaling, they can just take a picture of their journal and text it to you. And so you can still hold people accountable like you would if they had come into a practice and sat down and showed you the journal, but they're really just taking a picture of what they wrote down that they ate and it doesn't have to be more complicated than that so that's really fantastic now I know you have also um, worked with other health professionals to help them learn the TLS system and if you were to talk to somebody that's watching now that maybe they're a healthcare professional or maybe there's somebody that just is really interested in health and wellness and they're passionate about sharing it with others what would be a, a tip as to why they should consider the TLS line or the health and nutrition product line available through Nutrimetrics to health professionals through Market America? Yeah. Well, it, to me, it's kind of like a no-brainer that I think every health professional should just at least have their questions answered, at least evaluate it. And here's why. I believe that every health professional, regardless of the arena that you're practicing in, has the greater good of their patients at heart. And I really do believe that sometimes, no matter how hard you try, and or how hard the patient tries, the, the, you're just missing something, you know, and I'll use weight management as an example. And I've worked a lot in cardiac care. It is really hard to see a patient and you look at their EKG and you go through their meds and you say, you know, this is what you have to do. And we're going to change this med and we're going to send you for this test. And I'll see you in six months, but you've got to lose 50 pounds. And then they leave the office and they're like, all right, what do I, I do? Get healthy. And, you know, for the first few days, they have some egg white omelets for breakfast and then they're back on the sauce, so to speak. So I feel like somebody who is evaluating, um, you know, health and nutrition, weight management with Nutrimetrics, they, they really have to look at the whole picture because this is probably one thing in my personal opinion that most practices are lacking. They're lacking that common denominator of health and nutrition because we're so focused on disease maintenance. Right now, now speaking of that, right, you do not just retail TLS products like your retail has grown beyond the TLS line and, and you have a really strong retail business. And so if you're talking to a healthcare provider, how would you encourage them to maybe expand beyond their, their specialty, right? Like, for example, an OBGYN doesn't have to only focus on women's health products and a cardiologist doesn't have to stick with just the heart health line. Um, how would you encourage them to explore the other products and how they could support their patients? Yeah, that's a great question. So first and foremost, Nutrimetrics has a lot of products and they have a lot of wonderful products. And I'm not gonna sit here and pretend that I know everything about everything of all those hundreds of wonderful products. But what I will say is I know enough to be dangerous. I have taken um, many, many general product trainings with great trainers, great healthcare providers, as well as the product symposium that the corporate business market America puts together. So that for me was kind of a foundational standpoint of learning more than just heart health and more than just weight management. So we'll use the example of an OBGYN. Well, sure, they're gonna probably know more than anyone else does about the prenatals and all those kind of things. But I'll tell you what I see. 
is when patients come in, they have a bag of other supplements and they not all are related to what they're in that practice for. And so I will look at those and we'll go over them and why are you taking this and why are you taking that? And we kind of go over it. And quite honestly, some things they're taking are fine. Some things they're taking because their neighbor told them to take it. And some things they probably just need a good upgrade. And so by me being able to take some of the trainings that I've learned over the years, I've been able to look at patients um, non-prescription supplementation and say to them, you know, you're right on track. You know, you absolutely should be taking vitamin D. Your vitamin D level on our last labs is blah, blah, blah. And we really should be looking at this. And I'm proud of you that you're taking it. But did you know that vitamin D should have some vitamin K2 in it because it helps bind the D to the bone? And, you know, perhaps you might consider taking a better version when you're running out of this one. And so my claim to being able to retail more of just not just weight loss products, but more health and nutrition products is literally listening to people, listening to what they're interested in and also listening to what they're utilizing now. And I'll tell you one thing that I truly believe, and I know that yourself and Dr. Mason talk a lot about a lot about this. I believe that the healthcare provider really should look at our our um, our gut support. Our, our you know that's kind of where the fa I don't care what it is, what you specialize in, brain health, obstetrics, joint repair you got to have a clean gut, right? Your digestive system really has to be there. And if you're a gastroenterologist, forget it. Home run right there. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much. And so we talked a little bit already about why you think other practitioners should consider adding products to their system. Is there anything else that you want to add? Any final notes before um, we go on to Dr. Penny about why a practitioner should consider offering or why maybe a Nutrimetrics consultant should not hesitate to talk to their healthcare provider about what we offer? Yeah, that's and that's exactly it too, is I think it goes on both ends. I'll tell you why I think a practitioner or an NC Nutrimetrics consultant should consider talking to practices. First of all, the worst thing they can say is no, they're not interested. Secondly, their patients are interested. And I do believe that practices who are not offering something else to support their patients' health, those patients are going to go elsewhere. You know, they are looking for it. And nothing bothers me more than hearing one of my patients go to GNC and ask the 17 year old high school kid who's working part time behind the counter what they should take for X, Y, and Z for their health. So I feel like any practice should at least consider learning more. We're not talking about having hundreds of products on the shelf. We understand that our job is to help a person, you know, find some equilibrium in, in their life. And we understand that sales are not always our strong point. And that's why Nutrimetrics provides to me so much great training to teach you not how to sell something, but how to educate people on what they, they might be looking for to optimize their health. So I feel like people are looking, you know, I think if we walked down all of our streets right now and just kind of barged into our neighbor's house and <laughs> cabinets, we would each probably see at least five bottles of some kind of supplementation out there. And those five people all go to some kind of a doctor. So it just goes to show you that people want to stay healthy. They want to feel good. They want to lose weight and they want to have more energy. So I feel like Nutrimetrics can bring everything encompassed to a practice, no matter what they're looking for, there's something Nutrimetrics probably can offer. <laughs> no, I totally agree. Thank you so much. So thank you so much for taking the time with us today. And I do want to share, I know it's a big day for you. You are going back into the field and building your business. And I just want to personally thank you for all of your contributions to TLS over the last few years. And I so have enjoyed working with you. And I look forward to seeing you at the next event and giving you a big hug Absolutely. when I can see you in person again. Yes, but likewise. thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. Um, Dr. Penny, can you uh, join me on the screen, please? I would appreciate uh, being able to talk to you now and ask you a couple of questions about yourself and your practice. So um, Dr. Penny Vachon is local here to me in Charleston. And uh, we met, I think two or three years ago now at a, uh, I was doing a Nutrimetrics training in North Charleston and you happened to come in to meet somebody that you met through Facebook. And that's how we met that night. Yeah. Um, but let's talk, let's, let's tell the audience a little bit about 
your practice and what your specialty is and what makes you unique in the area? I know you just won some really uh, amazing awards here in Charleston as <laughs> best is. primary care practice, which is congratulations, awesome. Um, but let's tell the audience a little bit about your practice. Yeah, so I am an integrative nurse practitioner. Um, basically that means that I'm the happy blend of Eastern and Western medicine. Um, and so I have a very unique type of practice called direct primary care. It's a membership based model. And so my members just pay a low monthly fee. And for that, they get unlimited office visits. They get um, an annual physical with some labs. They get 24 seven access to me. Um, and then they get wholesale pricing on everything we do in the office. And so, as you said, last year, I had um, an existing practice that I'd opened in 2017. But in 2018, I converted it to the DPC model. And last year I won best family doc in Charleston, um, which was pretty amazing having it be my first year as a direct primary care practice, but even more so that I'm the only non-physician ever nominated and to win all at the same time. So it was pretty cool. Um, and so we're steadily growing. In fact, um, I just signed lease today for a new office space. So Awesome. That's are moving. Congratulations. That's great. Yeah. yeah. And so now tell the field about, I mean, tell the audience here about how you were introduced to Nutrimetrics. How did it find you? How did you find yeah, Nutrimetrics at Market America? It definitely found me. So I am a member of a lot of different um, provider groups on Facebook and Tina Rose, who is a women's health NP up in the Boston area. Um, we had just met on one of these um, nurse practitioner owner groups, uh, business owner groups. And she had mentioned that uh, she would be in Charleston for some event. And I said, well, great. If you come to town, just hit me up and, you know, we'll go and meet. And um, so she texted me and said, hey, by the way, I'm here. Um, do you know where this hotel is? And I said, yeah, it's five miles from my house. <laughs> um, so I went over and met this strange woman who I'd never met in person and um, hit it off and then sat there and got to find out what Nutrimetrics was. But I got to meet you and I got to meet um, Dr. D and um, who else? Did, and of course, Sarah and the whole Witowski clan. <laughs> um, and, and I think I met um, Dennis that night. And so I left that dinner, Tina and I ended up going to dinner and talking about all of these amazing things that she's doing that I'd never heard of. Um, and I went home and researched and registered and I texted her the next day. I said, okay, I'm in, sign me up. What do I need to do? <laughs> so. And it's so amazing. That's a great story for people to hear as well, because right now, as Sue pointed out, you know, people can't necessarily go out and do their office visits like they would have to go in and talk to practitioners. And I have a lot of NCs saying to me, how do we connect with people uh, to introduce them to Nutrimetrics? And so you met, and this was even before everybody was in, yeah. I mean, this was, this was, I, you know, years ago, you met through a Facebook group. And then from there, you came to an event and you weren't even there for the whole event. You just popped in and said, hello. I didn't even go to the event. Right. You guys were done for the evening and everybody was breaking for dinner. And I just went to meet Tina and listening to how everybody was talking about all these different products. And I was like, what are y'all talking about? Isotonic, what do you mean? <laughs> yeah. Like, I, I don't even know what this is. So, so. You, you were introduced via social media and then started building a relationship with Tina in Boston and the team up in Boston, but plugging yep. into events here. Um, and so now tell us a little bit, you know, fast forward, how has Nutrimetrics impacted your practice? What's your kind of favorite thing? If you had to pick one thing to share with people about what you love about Nutrimetrics and what it's done for your practice, what would that be? Well, I'm definitely a science nerd. And so um, I love the research behind it. Um, in fact, today I had a patient in the clinic and um, I had her come around to my computer and I had my Nutrimetrics page pulled up and I said, just look at all this data, all of these journal articles that you can go on to the Nutrimetrics page and you can pull all of the information of why they use these products, what the research is behind it. So as a science junkie, that's what I like. I'm just a research nerd and that just fills my science mind. Um, and I sent all of my patients to the website and say, please go on, do your due diligence, go through those journal articles, read the data, read the reports, get into that rabbit hole of information, and then we'll chat back about it. Um, and for my practice, I will say the number one thing that I just cannot keep on the shelves is vitamin D, which is perfect because a lot of people are D deficient and 
patients just get it. You know, we talk about the isotonic um, delivery system compared to capsules, which is how most people take D. And there's just no way to say that isotonic D is in any way, shape or form comparable to the over-the-counter D that they're gonna get from Walmart or Target. And, and that's a, that is a very easy uh, product to confirm that it's working, right? Because there's a blood Absolutely. test to actually yep. look at vitamin D serum exactly. levels. And so and a lot of times I know from working with practitioners all around the country of all specialties, um, when they do blood work on patients and they test their vitamin D levels, a lot of their patients were vitamin D users before. Mm -hmm. And maybe maybe the other product that they were on before increased their vitamin D serum levels slightly, but they definitely see a difference when they go mm -hmm. on the isotonic uh, vitamin D in their blood work. And um, you know, vitamin D is very useful for a lot of health reasons. So oh, it's, it's a great product to start with there. If you were going to um, give one tidbit to a health professional that might be watching, why would you can why would you encourage them to explore Nutrimetrics in more detail? You know, I think as a provider, especially as a primary care provider, um, we have to look at compliance, right? We want the best for our patients. That's why we do what we do. And so if there's a compliance issue with the big pharma, let's say that they're taking, and I can give them a natural and research backed alternative, why wouldn't I do that? Why wouldn't I do that in the best delivery system that I could? Because that's truly what's in my patient's best interest. So, you know, like Sue said, we all got into this to help people and, I, in a way, I kind of actually just had a conversation with a nurse practitioner yesterday and I said, I kind of feel like you're doing your patients a disservice by not offering this. You're yeah. just telling them to take the pills that they can find wherever and you're not guiding them. So I love the, the ability to really guide, which then in place, um, increases compliance. Awesome. Thank you. And then, you know, one thing I just want to point out as well is I know you had moved to kind of an e-consult model and do some online health uh, seminars and things like that for your patients yeah. in the in the past, not just in the last month, right? right. You, yeah, no, we've you've been, been moving that, that way. Yeah. Um, but where do you, where do you see uh, telehealth going in the future? And do you think more people coming out of this, like even when things open back up, that more practices will be embracing supporting their patients' health using oh, online yeah. tools like the website? Yeah. And I think so, you know, like you said, for my practice, we've been doing telehealth all along. Um, and so I think the masses, um, are starting to see that, wow, I, I can still really get great care from the comfort of home. Um, and so I think we're going to see that really open up the telehealth platform um, a lot bigger than what it has been. It's been around, but it's been a really small percentage of use. So I think going forward, we're going to see specialists doing initial consults that way. I think we'll, we'll see a lot of things converting to telehealth. You know, I tell patients all the time, there are just things that I can't do virtually. I can't take your x-ray online. I have to inject right. the needle into your body. I can't do it to your picture, <laughs> you know? So there will always be the need to have that face-to-face -face encounter. But I think if, if this has done nothing, it has proven that telehealth truly is the future of medicine. Awesome. Thank you so much. I appreciate you joining me today. Um, and so Dr. Dr. Rob Zembrowski, if you could join me on screen. I thank you, uh, Dr. Penny. Uh, let's go to Dr. Rob. Hi, I can see you. How are you hey, doing tonight? Right. I'm doing great, thank you. Um, so Dr. Zembrowski, we talked together, uh, Dr. Zembrowski, for those of you that don't know, has spoken at our product symposium. He is on our clinical faculty and helps us uh, teach in the Nutrimetrics uh, uh, health professional courses. And so I know a little bit about your practice because I've, I've taught with you, but can you tell the audience a little bit about your practice and what your specialty is and what makes your practice very unique? I guess if I were to classify, if I were to give you the elevator pitch, my elevator pitch is I rebuild people from chronic health issues and disease. And basically my specialty as a functional neurologist got veered off into the practice of functional medicine for my own journey through disease. And so for those who know me, uh, including you, you know, overcoming and rebuilding from non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, I had a big five inch tumor in my chest. Um, my clinic at the time was just super busy. And once I got diagnosed, I needed to know how I, why I developed disease, but I also wanted to know what, what I could do to rebuild myself back to excellent health, which then led me into the research, which then led me into functional medicine. And so for those who know and don't know, functional medicine really is a 
I don't want to say it's a philosophy, but it's a mindset to really um, understand or put your mindset as a practitioner into the place of thinking of why disease happens. So we always ask the question, why seven times to get to the root of the issue? And then we create treatment plans or, or, or um, a healing plan to rebuild those broken pieces of physiology. So my own personal journey through disease and a life-threatening disease pushed me into the field of functional medicine and that's where it's at. Right, and so now where's your practice based? So I am in Southern Connecticut. I'm in Darien, Connecticut. And how were you introduced to Market America and Nutrimetrics? Ha, some people could say, you know, Nutrimetrics came to me, but it was actually Lisa Grant. <laughs> yeah. So Lisa was just phenomenal, introducing me to the business model years ago. And uh, I have to say, I was hesitant to get involved. I'm a stickler for details. I'm, I'm, I'm a skeptic at heart. And so I needed to kind of prove to myself if what, she was and what the company was telling me was true, valid, um, research-based. And I was blown away once I understood really, one, the science behind the products, the research behind the products, the team that we built. I was proverbially sold on, on this business. And uh, it's been an absolute super success. And I've been love teaching for the company and getting to know all of you guys. It's been absolutely phenomenal. So if you were to pinpoint, like, like I asked Dr. Penny, if you were to pinpoint one thing that is uh, your favorite thing about your integration with Nutrimetrics into your business, uh, what would you say that is? Well, one, that's not a fair question because there's more than one thing. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so <clears throat> I guess there's a couple things. One, it would be, um, as Dr. Prashan said, the research behind the product. I I'm a freak for mechanisms, as you know. I love research. And the research really allows us as practitioners to go out and teach what, should, what, what people should really know or what we should really know about the science behind the product, what's in them, how they work. And so for me, I think I was insanely impressed with the research behind the products. And for me, I don't just go onto the website or, or unfranchise.com or shop. I don't go through that. I said, I want to prove it myself that there's research on specific ingredients and how they work. And it's all out there. It's, it's amazing. And if there's any practitioners watching now and providers, I strongly suggest you get involved, but more so understand the research and see what's out there. This company has put together so phenomenal products and they're all research-based. And the second part of that question, um, Brandy, is I think one of the most incredible, incredible benefits to me was the ancillary income that I've created during times of stress. So building my network base and my retail base back when allowed me to pay my bills, if you will, and keep myself, I rebuilt myself with these products during a time of personal crisis. And nobody knows when lightning's going to strike. But the reality is this business model is foolproof, right? And so two of my favorite, three, a third thing is one, my ancillary income from the business, two, the research and the science behind the products, but three, I love my team. I love the team that we have developed, not only from you and, and the others, but our local teams that we're building business with. It is so much fun. It's so much fun. I would never got never have gotten into the business if I was going to just do it by myself. So Lisa, we, you know, we were just saying it's a team, it's a team. And when I realized it was a team, that was it. So I have three favorites. <laughs> well, those are all great favorites and they're hard to pick, right? Because it does make a oh. huge impact. And there's a lot of people you were saying about, you, you never know when lightning's going to strike and you never know when you're going to need to have ancillary revenue. And, you know, the old Chinese proverb of the best time to plant a tree when you need shade was 20 years ago. But if you didn't plant the tree, then the second best time to plant the tree is right now. And so we are in this unique time where more people are home right now than usual. They might have more time on their hands than usual. And I find that 
you know, some people don't know what to do with that time. They might be Netflix binging. Yes. Yet in, within our community, we have a lot of people that are training binging and they're using the time at home to plug into the training model modules that have been created for them. They're plugging into all of the Zooms. They're learning from like right before this session, uh, Dr. Deidre Mason did a session on sleep and how you need to improve your sleep or else and in terms of health and immunity and uh, the stress response and people not getting enough sleep you know can end up creating some challenges but we have all these tools whether it's for patients to learn how to preserve their health or uh, promote optimal health whether it's for practitioners to learn how to create um, improved patient outcomes and derive ancillary revenue for their practice or whether it's for practitioners to be able to reach out to their patients who can't come to them as much we have options for all of them. And so let's talk about that for a second. I know right now you have patients all over the place, right? So how are you staying in touch with your patients to help them um, uh, stay committed to their health goals, even if they can't come into the office to see you right now, or if they live remote from you? Because I know you have patients in other countries, you have patients that, that see you online. Um, how, how are you staying in contact with them? You know, I, I think for a lot of practitioners, providers, um, there's newsletters, there's social media that can be created, you know, short videos that can be made, educational videos that made that in the world of social media and the world of telehealth and communication now, this is the ideal time to stay in touch with people. So certainly as in a private practice, we make calls. We still stay in touch saying, hello, you can still use a phone call to say hello. And people love that, that personal message coming from me and my staff. So we stay in touch via telephone. We stay in touch via social media. Everybody's tapped into social media, Facebook, newsletters. You know, we send out bi-monthly newsletters just, newsletters, just checking in with people. And the responses are incredible. And as you said, we've been consulting and doing a lot of telehealth stuff with people in Dubai, South Africa, Australia, the States. It's been so much fun. And the funny thing is all of the people all over the world complain about the same thing. They're confused. They're not getting the right information. They don't know what to do. They don't know what to take. They don't know who to believe. And so it really is a good time to find yourself in all of this as a practitioner. And there's a million different ways to, to contact people. And if it's your own patient base, pick up the phone, say hello to them, <laughs> wish them well, send out a newsletter, send out an email. You know, it's... It, it's almost annoying that you can be in their faces so much, people's faces so much, you know? <laughs> but it is appreciated. I know even just the other day, uh, my kid's chiropractor sent me a text message video, right? The, the chiropractor just, she sent a text message to the kids. She didn't talk to me. She was like, hello, Tristan and Brayden. I, I'm sending this message to your mom because I miss you and I want to say hello. And she just gave them a little well wish and texted it to me. And I showed it to the kids. They're six and eight and they loved it, right? So it, those types of little reach outs, even if they seem you know, trivial, it really makes a difference in keeping that practitioner and patient relationship, even with kids, they recognize that. So, you know, social, and I agree with you, social media has, has segregated people without the one-on-one -on -one communication, right? So I love the one-on-one -on -one communication in the office, but we're also blessed with technology that we can actually touch base with, call, so, you know, send a video. There's a million ways to do this. Just do it. Right. right. Million. <laughs> um, any final thoughts or anything else that you want to share with practitioners? If I were to say one thing or share one thing or encourage a provider or practitioner, one, do your homework, understand the business, know the research behind the products. That's it as practitioners. But I will say sole practitioners and providers need a walk away income. So if a time comes in personal crisis or environmental crisis, you have built kind of a, a, a safety net for yourself financially and certainly with products to keep yourself well. So I think people really need to understand that this business uh, really allows us to create a secondary ancillary or walkaway income to protect us in times of crisis. 
I agree with you wholeheartedly. Thank you so much for taking the time tonight. No, no and Sue, Sue and Dr. Penny, if you're still on, if you just want to jump on and say hello, if there's any other final uh, thoughts that you have before we end the session for tonight. I know we did have some questions that came in. Some of the questions were about specific products that we would recommend for specific treatments. Of course, we can't answer or provide medical advice. So if you did ask a question that was about a specific treatment or a specific product, um, we can't answer those on this type of webinar or Zoom. Zoom or Facebook chat, uh, but we do appreciate everybody joining us tonight. Any final uh, comments from Sue or Dr. Penny tonight? And I think the big thing is, um, especially for NCs, don't be afraid to, to approach practitioners. They don't know what they don't know, but you do. And so it's on you to bring that information to them. Give them, get, give them a couple samples, make them try the product. Don't make them, encourage <laughs> them to try the product. Leave Make a little them. bit of research behind. I think you'll get a call. <laughs> thank you. And thank you so much. And Sue, anything, a final comments from you? Um, I just, yeah, I, I'll kind of piggyback that. I feel like people are, people are asking questions. Everybody's more now than ever trying to find ways to maintain and develop optimal health. And we kind of have the answer. We do. I agree. And that's a perfect note to end on. Thank you so much, everybody. I so appreciate the attendees joining us and our panelists tonight. Thank you, guys. Everybody have a great night and stay well. Thanks. Yes, thank you. Bye. Be safe.